Hey, welcome back to another episode of 40 TV with your host, 40. Today we're going to be adding on that previous impulse tutorial in Ableton Live 8. We're going to be adding a baseline to this track. Uh, why don't we get started? So, first things first, um, we want to use a, a synthesizer for this bass line. Um, over here on the left hand side, oh by the way I have loaded uh, the previous um, tutorial that we did. This is the um, drum kit. Let's uh, take a quick listen. That's a drum kit that we created uh, in the previous lesson. Uh, make sure to check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, over here on the left hand side, this second button right here shows you your instruments, MIDI effects, and audio effects all included with Ableton Live. The second button are your available audio units or VSTs. To enable these plugins to be active, you want to go into Live, Preferences, Let me move this window for you, and in this fourth option, File and Folders, right here you want to have Use Audio Units or VST plugins. Turn them on in order to see those uh, plugins in this list here. So my audio units are shown. Um, over on the left hand side um, we've got this uh, plugin called Silent by Lenart Digital. Um, it's a cool synth. Let's drag it out over here into an empty space. It'll create a new uh, MIDI track. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose the um, bass that we or that I decided on using for this particular track. Um, so let's scroll on down. I believe I went with patch 90, um, the Moog bass. Let's audition that. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can audition sounds on your QWERTY keyboard by using the A through L keys. You can also switch octaves by using Z or X. Z will bring you down one octave. X will bring you up one octave. Okay, um, let's go ahead and close this. So now that we've got this loaded, um, uh, now that we've got the silence loaded on this MIDI track, we're going to go ahead and create a clip. And create a clip by double clicking here. When we double click, we load a clip here. Um, and you want to make sure this notes uh, information is shown. If it is not shown, it's because this is notes button is not selected here. So for example, if it looks something like that, you want to make sure you click on the notes icon to show your notes information because we're going to change the length of this loop from one bar to two. Go ahead and click on the one, press two, click enter, and voila, we got a two bar loop, right? Um, so next thing that we want to do is go ahead and draw some note information. Um, Obviously, uh, this is something that you can play around with um, when designing a bass line. Um, you can draw your notes uh, or you can play your notes in with a MIDI keyboard. We'll go over using a MIDI keyboard with Ableton uh, Live in a future tutorial. Um, but if you want to addition your notes, you want to click on this speaker icon. And obviously, uh, when you choose uh, your bass line, you want to make sure that you pick um, uh, the note value that corresponds to the song. If they're going to be vocals, obviously um, the harmonic uh, or the note settings that you use for your bass should correspond to the um, what the vocals are sung in. So if they're sung in a key of F, you want to make sure that the bass is complementary to that vocal key. Um, since this track uh, doesn't look to have any vocals at the moment, um, I went ahead and picked a C sharp for this particular bass line. Um, I wanted to go with something funky, uh, something syncopated. Uh, so I ended up coming up with a pattern, something like this. Uh, your pattern may differ. Um, don't worry, uh, obviously you don't need the same pattern. Um, but I ended up liking this one. Let's see. I think it was something like something like that. Let's give it a listen. Go ahead and uh, click on the play button for these first track uh, clips. Pretty funky, right? I stopped all clips with this button right here. Um, we can go ahead and drag this down to see a little bit more of the information on the top here. 
Now that we've got our uh, baseline node information uh, entered, one of the things I wanted to do was kind of widen this base up a little bit. Um, I did so by going back over here to my plugins directory. Sound Toys makes a cool plugin. Well, they make a lot of cool plugins, but a cool plugin called Echo Boy. Echo Boy is a um, delay or echo plugin, but it has a pretty cool preset in here under bass called Wider Fatter. Um, which kind of fattens up your bass a little bit, gives it a little bit of a uh, little more sex appeal. Let's play it without and with. If you're listening to this on your computer speakers, you may not hear. Um, it's not a big difference to begin with, but if you're listening on your computer speakers, you may not hear the difference. So either slap on some headphones um, or make sure you're playing it over some decent speakers and you should hear a difference. So this is without. Oops, I need to press play here. And this is with. Just a little something, something extra, you know what I mean? Uh, let's go ahead and name this track by pressing Command R or Control R on a PC. We're going to call this Bass Low. The reason we're going to call it Bass Low is we're actually going to create a bass high. Um, this is the low end of the bass. We want to create something a little snappier, a little a little more tickling of the ears, if you will. Um, to do so, we're going to use the same note patterns we use in this particular bass line. So we can duplicate this track by selecting bass low and going up to edit and selecting duplicate or pressing command D or control D on a uh, PC. This will copy all the information on this track, place it in a new track. By having this second track selected, we want to go ahead and delete the Echo Boy and delete the silent synth. Um, we can click here in the note information to see if the notes are still there. Uh, so that's good. And what we want to do is we want to use a different synthesizer. I ended up picking the Albino 3 from Rob Patton, uh, another good synth. Uh, and in this synthesizer, I switched the sound bank from ambient layer to synth bases. I apologize. Uh, it's a uh, synth bases one, actually. I apologize. It's cut off on the screen. No way for me to raise it up. Um, and the patch that I went with, I think, was Fist Bass. Insert Fist Joke now. <laughs> All right, so let's close that out. Um, so let's audition the Albino 3. OK, so there we go. If we bring it down an octave, up an octave. Cool. So let's play it back now with both of these basses playing together. I went ahead and stopped all clips by clicking stop clips here. One of the things that we notice is this, um, first of all, they sound like two separate uh, synths playing the same notes, and it doesn't really sound harmonious. It doesn't sound like they're coming together. So really what we need to do is group these synths. I'm going to press stop on the transport up here. A little OCD and things like that. <laughs> So in order to group these two synths, we can create a new audio track um, and send that audio to that audio track. So by going up to the Create button, clicking Insert Audio Track, we're going to call this Bass Group. So select it, press Command R, Control R on a PC, and type in Bass Group. We want to uh, toggle our input-output uh, mode. And by doing so on the right-hand side, you see this little button right here. We click that and it shows our input output information per track. On bass low, we want to send the audio to, instead of master, we're going to select bass group. And we're going to do so the same thing for bass low. Uh, in doing so, if we play, we're not going to hear anything. And the reason we're not hearing anything is because this bass group, we need to set the monitor to in. Clipping every once in a while on the master track, so the levels of these basses are a little bit too high. So let's drop them down a bit, a little bit. I also don't want this high end, uh, or, I'm sorry, let's rename this track. The bass high, I don't want this to take away too much of the bass low. Obviously, it, uh, our ears are more sensitive to this high end uh, sound, so we're catching it. Um, but I did adjust the volumes a little bit to make sure that the bass high was a little bit lower than the bass low. Um, obviously, when we go through the mix down phase of this tutorial, we will 
play with it further. One of the things that we need to do in this base group is add a compressor. So if we select the base group, go back to the effects that ship with Ableton Live under audio effects and go to compressor. Let's drag this into this base group uh, audio effects. One of the things I want to do is drop the attack down. I don't know, maybe to 0.42 milliseconds. Drop the release down to one millisecond. We're going to increase the ratio from two to 2.5. That's not compressing it too much, but we'll compress it a little bit. Um, kind of what we're really trying to do here is not really squash the bases, but just make them sound more like one sound or that they were layered um, from the same set. So if we drag this threshold down until we're starting to see some gain reduction, you know, not too much. Again, I'm not trying to squash these bases too much, um, but let's hear with and without. So this is with, without. So by adding the compressor, we kind of made the sounds gel a bit, little bit more together. The sound as if they're layered from the same synth. Um, to me, it just sounds a lot better. Uh, so we've got our pattern now going. It's starting to come together. Obviously, we need to play with uh, our mix a little bit here. Uh, one of the other things that I did is I added on the master track an ozone. Ozone 4 is a uh, mastering plugin um, available from Isotope. Uh, I'm not going to go over the settings in this particular tutorial, but uh, in a future tutorial when we're talking about mixing and mastering, uh, I'll talk about some of the settings to brighten your track. But let's hear it with and without, and you can see the huge difference that this will bring to the track. So this is without. Obviously a huge difference, right? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial adding a bass line to our uh, drum loop. Uh, we're going to continue in this series. We're going to complete a whole song in Ableton Live from beginning to end. Thanks again for joining us on 40 TV. This is your host, 40. Uh, look forward to catching you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.